friends in today's video i have a special process that i'm going to show you that is my devotional time process i'm going to show you all the steps that i make as i just do my devotional time every morning so if you're interested in that please stick around hey my name is belinda i'm the founder of organizing blessed mom and i'm back with another creative idea if you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notifications so you will know when a new video is posted. All right, friends, this uh, morning I'm going to show you what I do. So I'm going to do my devotional um, time right now, and I'm just going to go ahead and film it for you. What I usually do to start off is to turn on this candle or something that smells nice. This one is one of my favorites because it has this fall smell. So I like to kind of prepare my area for, you know, reading my Bible. And sometimes I do put instrumental music. I always have a glass of water. I don't, I don't drink anything. I like coffee. I like to drink tea, but I like to drink it in the afternoon. So in the mornings, usually... I have my cup of water that I'm trying to drink. I try to drink um, at least one of these, if not two. This is a 20 ounce cup. And then uh, let me show you uh, what I use for my devotional time. All right, so real quick, what I usually use for my devotional time is my Bible journal. Of course, my Bible. I have a prayer journal. I have my devotional book. And I also have my goal planner. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how I use those. And I want to start by just telling you that, um, you know, I think we all need to recognize what season of life we are in. And um, that will dictate pretty much how you can structure your, your devotional time. I want to just caveat by telling you that when I used to work outside the home, uh, I did not have a devotional time. Uh, it was just um, whatever I could, you know, whatever sermon I could listen to while I was at work or, you know, just praying to God while I was uh, driving in my car. So it was totally nothing. My devotional time in that, in that season of life looked totally different. Now, I am a stay-at-home mom. I also homeschool my kids. So we don't have to be at a, turn, at a certain place at a certain time. Uh, we can use our time as we wish. So that is part of why or how I do my devotional uh, time because I do have time and I can use it um, the way that I want to use it. So I just want to just give you that um, that I, I guess uh, explanation that this is there's not one way to do a devotional you can do a devotional uh the way god leads you and whatever works for you just recognize what season you're in and don't try to do it like others do it because we're all in a different season so take what you can from this and then you know use for use it as as you would like so usually the first thing that I do is I start with my, my, what do I call these? Affirmations. So this is something I put in my goal planner and I usually just uh, recite and thank the Lord for my year. And I just usually say, thank you Lord for my year of delight. And I recite my verse of the year. Then I go through and I have um, just different kind of um, goals and I just uh, thank God for the progress I'm making in those goals after that um, I do go to record where I am reading in the Bible so I am reading through the prophets this year so today in this particular day I am going to do Amos uh, 3 so I usually kind of um, take this out so that I can write better. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put here Amos chapter 3. And I'm also doing from my devotional of the 100 days 
to dream um, to dream your heart out. I usually just kind of abbreviate the title in my tracker here and I'll put the day. So today I did day 20 last week so I'm doing day 21. So that just kind of at the end of every month I record how many chapters of the Bible I read and then how how much progress I made inside my devotional book uh, because I do count that as you know as one of my goals how much reading I do and so now I am ready now that I know what I'm reading I am ready to read the Bible all right friends so I am in Amos 3 today and it only has 15 verses so it, I probably won't have a lot of highlight. Um, it just depends. I just kind of highlight what I find um, that attracts me in the chapter. And I'm going to highlight and then I'm going to add those pieces to my Bible journal. So I'm just going to put some music here and just show you the process. So I have read um, all the chapter and I have highlighted about four or five pieces of verses and that is what I'm going to put in my Bible journal. So let's do that. All right, so next I am ready to get into my Bible journal, but of course the journal right now is blank. So I, the first thing I do is I do stamp the date and then I'm going to add the decor so that I can add my scripture and then do my soap method. I have a video all about the soap method if you want to see it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp. Usually what I do at the beginning of the week is stamp um, the date for the whole for the whole week. That way I don't have to do this process again but today for the sake of the video i'm only going to do what i need to do today so today is the 17th i'm using these uh these stamps are from joanne and this one is from uh catherine pooler i love her date stamps so i'm just going to stamp this with this beautiful color I've been using this month. It's called um, Creme Brulee from Studio Calico. And we're just gonna ink it up and put it here on the second line. It's all right if it's not exactly perfect. That's the beauty of stamps. And this today is the 17th so I do do this process only Monday through Friday because that is what works for this okay day. let's go ahead and decorate so what I usually do uh, once I I've read my Bible I kind of know then how much space I will need and then the other thing is this um, this Bible journal the whole point of it is to journal so I do like to leave a lot of space for my journal I want to cut this um, and I want to give it a little edge here so I love to use washi I'm just gonna cut and make this like irregular. Uh, this is really cool washi. It's uh, by Recollections. I bought it at Michaels. So I usually like to put my decoration in the corners or on the top. For example, this area, I can't use it because it has a Bible verse. 
so I'm just going to cover it up because it doesn't bother anybody up there and it creates um, just a pretty thing let me go ahead and cut this one as well maybe so that way I can actually see the verse oh a tort okay how about just bring that up I'm gonna tear the page and I don't like that okay so well now looks kind of weird let's see we can fix this <laughs> Well, some of the words came off, but um, the point is to kind of give it some kind of decoration. And I will be using today my The Paper Studio um, book. I kind of pick whatever book that I think fits the day. I do want to use these florals. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to use it. I have not really used these florals and I usually pick a corner and I like to group maybe about three things together I also want to see if I can cover up my mistake up here let's try to cover it up here very nice so that way it you can't see that I tore that <laughs> And then I just kind of go through the book and see what can go. I've been wanting to use this cup of coffee, although I'm not a coffee drinker. I like how it looks. And I try to do three little like stations. So if you, and I try to do them maybe in triangle if I can. With these flowers, I usually like to do a quote. I think that looks really pretty, although I do like this book stack. Okay, let's see. Today is a beautiful day. Let's just go with this one. Today is a beautiful day. And I can either do there. Let me just put it up here. Because I want room to write, I am going to put it up there. So I'm also, I'm also kind of gauging that, you know. How can I situate these in a way that will still give me that space to, to write? I like this flower. I didn't have any flowers down here. And then I think we just need something here right next to that and let me bring on this little green flower it has to be something kind of narrow and long and I like that so I got my three little clusters three elements usually about three things in each cluster I got two things here one there and this one's kind of by itself so that was the uh, farmhouse sticker book so I'm going to put you on uh, I'm just gonna put some music while I write in so I'm going to write in my scripture, my observation, application, and prayer. And then I will write my memory verse as well for the week. And um, then I'll show you how it came out.
Okay, I have done my scripture part of the soap method. So I have written in the scriptures that I had previously highlighted. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to underline the words that I liked from these passages. So I I don't sometimes I do write the whole verse, sometimes I write just part of it. That's why I do the dot 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 meaning there's something else there, but um, I have enough of what I wanted to pick out from that verse. So I says, hear this word. I love that he talked about uh, the word that comes from God. Hear this word, people of Israel. The word again of the Lord has spoken. And then it does say against them. But what I did like about this verse was the the just the, the way that it describes that God speaks to us. And that's what I'm picking out from this verse. So I know sometimes in the Old Testament, there are some really hard things, especially in these, um, in these books of the prophets. There's a lot of uh, condemnation. There's a lot of uh, judgment. But I'm picking what uh, speaks to me. So I can see here, although he's speaking against them, the what i'm taking for myself is that god still speaks and and he warns us you know in in our life um and so he does say that he is against the whole family it really um intrigued me that he talked about the family you only have an eye chosen of all the families of the earth again he's talking about families he's talking about word about speaking to us and he gives an, an example. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? So I loved how he talks about relationships. When disaster comes, so he's talking about disaster, comes to a city, has not the Lord caused it? And this, although it is a very negative verse, I do like that it shows me that God's always in control. You know, that's what I get from that. Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. So here, you know, the Bible tells us that we are um, kings and priests uh, through Jesus. So we could say that um, he still reveals his plan to us, you know, for our family, for our life as as um, prophets through Jesus so um, that's what I'm taking so here we go for the observation that's the second part of the soap method and what I usually put in observation is um, the the big headline that comes already with the chapter if if there's a big title that's not with a particular chapter uh, I just make my own. So it's just like an observation of what this chapter was talking about. So it says here, witnesses summoned against Israel. So usually those uh, titles are, are very very close to what the chapter was but I can if I feel it um, I can also make my own observation and then the next one is application so this is where I will you know reflect and this is probably one of the most important parts of a, a devotional time right it's when you take the Word of God and you say what does it mean to me how can I learn from what God was telling these people in these days? So uh, what I got is that God still speaks or that God speaks to us today. I got that from where he said, hear my word and how he reveals his plan. I also like the fact that he talks about how he's chosen our family. Although he, you know, in this passage they're talking about Israel, I think we can also believe that God um, has chosen 
our family for a purpose. So uh, God speaks to us today. And also I learned that God has chosen us as his family. So, you know, through, um, through Jesus, we have been made family with him. So I usually do something really brief. And then I'll put down a prayer. And this is usually more of a thankful prayer. Um, but it's a prayer based upon what I learned. So today, I learned that God speaks to us today. That God has chosen us as his family. That he's still in control. That he's sovereign. Um, so let's put something. I usually say, Father... Thank you that your word speaks to us. And then I'll say, help me be, be open to your, to your voice. If he speaks, I want to be listening, right? And then usually, uh, if I have room, I will grab or write down my memory verse. So let me let me grab that. So my verses this year are coming from this box of verses that I found at Marshalls. It's an Ecolo box, and they do have the verses by Faith, Hope comfort and love last week my verse was proverbs 3 5 and i do write in the back that i got it from the faith section so now i'm gonna go to the hope section i love hope verses and we're getting down to the end of the year so there's not a lot of verses left um so let's just pick this one and i got it from from the hope section that will tell me to get from the next division but those who hope in the lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint isaiah 40 31 so i'm going to write that in my bible verse and that will be i mean in my bible journal and that's going to be my bible verse that i'm going to try to memorize memorize this week Okay, so today I read Amos chapter 3 and this is how it ended up looking inside my Bible journal. I went ahead and did my scripture, my observation, my application, my prayer, and then I picked out a memory verse for the week. And uh, I think it came out really nice. I love this really soft palette and that's how I do my Bible journal um, Monday through Friday. I will, if I have enough time, I'll keep on going with my devotional. Sometimes, you know, I have to start homeschool and, you know, at least I want to get to this part of my devotional time. For this morning, I'm going to keep on going and show you what I do next. All right, so next I will go into my prayer journal. I have some prayer requests back here. And I'm going to pray for those requests. And then I'm going to go to the next available page. And um, I usually decorate two pages at a time. So last week I decorated for today. And I'm just going to write down my prayer of the day. Whatever is in my heart. Whatever I feel God um, wants me to pray about. Or whatever things I want to bring to God. I will write them in. And that's what I do in my prayer journal. For the sake of, you know, privacy, I'm not going to show you this part, but I did want to show you that that's what I do in here. All right, friends, and the last thing I'm going to do is uh, read my devotional, 100 Days uh, to Dream Your Heart Out. This is a devotional journal by Dayspring. 
I love to read devotionals. They are my favorite um, because they usually contain some kind of a an encouraging word. And sometimes there are passages where we are reading the Bible that are not very encouraging. <laughs> so I am using this big stamp from Studio Calico to just write down my date every time that I read inside this um, devotional journal and I am going to stamp sometimes I do stickers sometimes I do stamps just depends on what I'm feeling that day so today I'm just gonna stamp a couple leaves just to bring in some decor and let's see if we get some other flowers in here I don't like make it super decorative the point mostly to me is to get what God wants to speak to me through this devotional. So, I think that looks pretty good. And then I usually make some lines so that I can kind of write a prayer in here. Um, so let me go ahead and make those lines they're gonna be a little a little wonky but it's just a guide all right I am going to go ahead and clean up my stamp things and then come back and read that um, passage. Okay, friends, I have finished uh, reading my devotional for today and I have um, decorated a little bit and put my prayer of the day. I also do like to go and check off my progress in the front of the book. So I am on day 21. So it's been a while since I checked in on the progress. I just kind of like to see how I'm doing, um, how close I'm getting to that day 100 with this devotional book well friends i hope you enjoyed uh doing my devotional time with me i hope that helps and gives you ideas to implement uh in your life like i said at the beginning everybody does their time differently i just wanted to provide a couple of ideas and to encourage you as you study through the bible or as you you know read a devotional book as well after i finish my devotional uh, time i always put it back here so that i can have it ready to go i always keep my things um, close by and together so that my devotional time can be more efficient as well if you liked the video please give it a like and uh, leave me a comment let me know if you like this kind of content so that i can bring you more of this or if you have any questions of the materials that i used all right friends see you in the next one bye bye